What's up guys? So the long-awaited vanilla expanded revamp of Genetic Rim has finally arrived. In this video, I'm going to go over what this mod adds and we'll walk through how to get started using this mod as well. So I've got my colony here, which I built for the most part in dev mode, <laughs> specifically for this video because otherwise it would have taken me like 30 hours of playtime to get this advanced with regular pawns uh, due to my play style, shall we say. <laughs> I don't have royalty or ideology turned on for this and my mod list is reasonably minimal. I want all the focus to be on this new vanilla expanded mod. So let's get into it. Vanilla Genetics Expanded adds an unbelievable amount of content to the game. The core of the mod is that it allows you to create hybrid species using advanced technology. Let's take a look at the actual ingredients required to create a hybrid animal. Hybrids are created by combining a framework piece of tech called a genoframe plus two animal genomes, plus an additive called a booster, which is optional, and further impacts how your hybrid forms. These items are combined in a new workstation called a genomorpher, producing an embryo contained within a growth cell. This growth cell must then be implanted into an incubator called an electro womb. There, it will mature into your hybrid creature. Now, how exactly do you acquire these ingredients up top, though? Let's look at our research projects. The first and most basic genetics research to complete is called genetic alteration. We're gonna complete it with debug because don't have time for that. This gives us two new workstations, a genome extractor table and a tissue grinder, and one workbench to boost production speed called a nutrient vat. The tissue grinder is where you will create geno frames, the blank scaffolding for your hybrid. Now, unlike other things you produce in RimWorld, you actually select what quality you want to produce here, and that determines what ingredients it's going to need. Producing one awful genoframe requires one corpse. Human or animal, it just has to be fresh. To produce a higher quality genoframe, you have to combine two lesser quality genoframes. For example, if I want to produce a poor genoframe, which is a step up from awful, I'll make two awful genoframes first. Then these can be combined into one poor genoframe. Sounds easy enough, but they add up fast to the point where if you want to create a legendary genoframe from scratch, it'll end up costing you 64 awful genoframes. Fortunately, you can also find genoframes on quests throughout the world, which we'll touch on a little bit later. So what is the benefit to higher quality genoframes? Well, they impact the stats of your hybrid. This chart from the Steam Workshop page shows you how the quality of the genoframe impacts the hybrid's move speed, market value, size, hunger rate, life expectancy, and more. The higher quality genoframe you use to create your hybrid, the higher quality creature you're going to actually produce. So that's how to get genoframes. These are not perishable, by the way, so you do not need to refrigerate them. Now what about the actual genomes? For this, we'll use the genome extractor table. There are three different tiers of genome based on rarity, and this extractor table can only create the lowest tier genome. In our different bell options, we can see the different types of tier one genomes that can be created. And if you open up their details, you can see what types of animals you can extract their genome from. The tier one genomes are ursine or bear, boom, which are like your boomalope creatures, avian or bird, feline, which of course is cat, canine or the dog family, Rodent, which is, you know, alpha beaver, capybara, chinchilla, rats, obviously. Muffalo, which is only muffalo, yaks, and bison, and then humanoid. The ingredient required to extract a genome is one fresh corpse of that animal type. So to extract a muffalo genome, I need a fresh corpse of a bison, yak, or muffalo. Now for our second genome, Let's go for a feline genome from a cougar, just because I happen to know there's already a dead cougar on this map. Now, genomes are perishable once created and they must be frozen or they will deteriorate fairly quickly. So now we have all of the required ingredients to make a basic hybrid. We have one genoframe and two genomes. However, we don't have the tech yet to actually combine these. Back to the research tree, and the next thing we'll research is genetic creation. This unlocks the genomorpher, the genetics tinkering table, and two different sizes of electro womb. The genomorpher is where a combination will actually take place to create an embryo, and the electro womb is where the embryo will be incubated until matured. So I've built both, and we're gonna look at the genomorpher first. To get started on a hybrid, you click your genomorpher and select designate a growth cell. This opens up the interface. 
Here, you'll select the two genomes you want to combine, choosing which you want to be dominant. Whichever one you place as a dominant genome will have more of an effect on your creature. You can also combine two of the same genome to create a paragon, basically like a supreme perfect version of that animal. Remember that for later. For this example though, I'll pick feline as my dominant with muffalo as my secondary. Then select the genome frame. I only have this one awful one. And we haven't made any boosters yet, so I'll leave this last slot empty. Now we can see that it's telling me my most likely outcome will be a cat flow at 80% likelihood. There's a 10% chance I'll end up with a muffalo cat and a 10% chance that the combination will fail and I'll produce an aberrant flesh beast. A failure might also result in a creature called a fleshling, which is an affectionate, disgusting creature that nuzzles your pawns a lot and will die without nuzzling. Or a flesh monstrosity, which is manhunter and will kill anything in its path. Or even a flesh growth, which will spread on any unlit tile and release swarms of flesh flies periodically, which will attack and kill any living thing in your base. The growth is flammable, so it's best to torch it immediately if you get one of these. But uh, yeah, these are disgusting. Now back to the interface, down here, it will also tell you the time it's gonna take to create the growth cell. So once I set that up, I'm gonna hit initialize and my pawns will go ahead and get started and load all the ingredients into the genomorpher. Let's fast forward three days and my genomorpher spits out a completed growth cell containing the embryo. This must be put in the electro womb or frozen until you want to mature it. Once my pawn inserts it into the electro womb, all we do is wait and finally out hatches our creature. If we open up our hybrids information, we can see that it has a lot in common with both mufflos and cats. It's still a pack animal like a muffalo, but much like cats, it's not stopped by farm fences and it has a more varied diet. It also nuzzles. We can also see that our hybrid will develop a genetic disease in just 1.5 years. There are four such diseases added by this mod. Animal tuberculosis, wherein your animal will slowly bleed to death from its lungs. Animal abasia, which is much like the annoying paralytic abasia that pawns will get, uh, which prevents the animal from walking. Sarg syndrome, where the animal will only be able to consume human meat and Greater Scaria, where the creature will go berserk for about five days before dying. Now, the higher quality the hybrid created, the much longer we have before one of these diseases sets in. Remember, our genome frame that we used was awful, so this is an awful quality hybrid. We can also see in its health tab that it's automatically sterilized and will not be able to reproduce with even other cat flows. This is where those additives, the boosters, come in. You can create boosters at the other workstation unlocked by our most recent research, the genetics tinkering table, which is like an extra fancy fabrication bench. There are six different types of craftable boosters. There's immuno boosters, which reduce the chance of your hybrid resulting in failure, one of those horrible flesh beasts. The harmono booster, which increases the likelihood of your hybrid being dominated by the dominant genome rather than the secondary genome. The Tempo Booster, which speeds up the growth process to save time. A Fertility Unblocker, which allows the hybrids to breed with others of their same hybrid species. The Stabilizer, which slows down your growth time drastically, but increases the chances of the hybrid turning out as intended. And the Controller Booster, which actually gives you the ability to draft the hybrid, but it also increases the chance of the hybrid creation resulting in failure. These boosters require various combinations of steel and other items to make depending on their function. Some require insect jelly, industrial medicine, advanced components, chem fuel. With the exception of the controller booster requiring an advanced component, they aren't particularly expensive to make. You can also craft a handheld genome excavator at this table. Your pawns can use this to extract a genome from a corpse or a living tame animal, although doing so will kill that animal. Now you might have noticed that the genomes we've looked at so far do not account for all the animals in the base game. That's because our genome extraction table that we were using is only powerful enough to extract those tier one genomes. If we wanna get a tier two genome, we have to use one of these handheld excavators. Tier two genomes are reptilian, equine, or insectoid. There is only one tier three genome, the colossal genome. You need an even fancier tool to extract this, 
an Arcotech genome excavator. This is an artifact and you acquire it by going on various quests and finding it as loot on other map tiles. So we've mastered the basics of genetic engineering here and can now make hybrids out of genomes and can also craft boosters to enhance our hybrids and increase our chances of success. Let's get even fancier. Our next research item is genetic duplication, which unlocks the genome recombinator. Now, this workstation has one purpose and one purpose alone, to duplicate certain genomes. This is advantageous since certain genomes are harder to come by naturally than others. This will not work to duplicate colossal genomes though, so those are gonna be very limited in game. First, you have to create a template genome, which consumes 100 kilograms of any old animal corpses you have laying around. Then, you combine it with the genome you want to duplicate. So here, for example, if I wanna duplicate my reptile genome, my pawn will insert the template genome I just made and my one reptile genome, and the end result is two reptilian genomes. So this is a good way to easily get more tier two genomes. Moving on in our research to genetic augmentation. This unlocks a workstation called an implant augmentator at which you can craft a ton of different types of animal implants that can be installed in animals and hybrid animals. The ingredients needed for these are genoframes and then different combinations of genomes. For example, to create an insect mandibles implant that increases eating and melee efficiency in its recipient, you need one genoframe and one insectoid genome. The quality of the genoframe naturally affects the quality of the implant. There are a ton of these, so you could make some really viciously enhanced creatures if you put in the time. The next research project is genetic compatibility. This unlocks human implants at that same genetic augmentation bench. These implants require one genoframe, one animal genome, and one humanoid genome to create, so they are a bit more expensive and extra horrifying to picture. The devouring jaws implant, for example, requires one genoframe, a canine genome, and a humanoid genome, and makes your pawn eat much faster. Or the muffalo skin implant, which requires one humanoid genome, one muffalo genome, and then one genoframe, gives your pawn more cold resistant and slightly tougher skin. Although we can see that since this implant was awful, it's actually only increasing their cold resistance by like two degrees. There are limitless grotesque combinations if you get creative. Lastly, in our research tree, there is genetic mecha hybridization. <laughs> this is where you create essentially mechanoid hybrids of various animals. Only paragon hybrids, which remember is a genetically perfect creature created with two of the same genome, can be mechanized. These mechanoid hybrids cannot be created at your home colony. You must create them using a special mecha hybridizer device at a biomechanical lab location elsewhere on your world map. But how the heck do we find a lab? Well, we're gonna turn to the items unlocked by this research project. We have the biomechanical lab beacon, and we can see that the materials required for it is just one mech chip. Um, you cannot craft this, you have to find it, uh, so as soon as you get in game, I recommend going out on some caravans if you get any sort of quests to check out abandoned labs because I guarantee you will find one soon enough. So if you build the biomechanical lab beacon, it will almost immediately locate a biomechanical lab for you. You can then caravan there. Keep in mind that you must bring the Paragon hybrid with you on the caravan in order to mechanize them at the lab. So I'm gonna bring my canine Paragon. Once you get to this lab, you'll find the Mecha Hybridizer, which is still operational. Your pawns can load your Paragon into the device and it will take 12 hours for them to be transformed. Every time a creature is mechanized, a nearby fuse blows up, so you have a limited number of mechanoid hybrids you can make in each lab. When there are no more fuses left, a mech raid is triggered, uh, so watch out. So let's say you live through all of that and you make it home with some mechanoid hybrids. Check out our Mecha Wolf here. We now have to construct the other item unlocked by that last research project, a mecha hybrid antenna. You need one of these for every five mecha hybrids that you have in your colony. They maintain the tameness of mechanoid hybrids. Without them, the hybrids will go manhunter in five days time. So now let's talk about those new abandoned lab quests. If you caravan out to these sites, you'll find a bunch of goodies such as genomes, boosters, architect excavators, and even some abandoned but still operational lab equipment. 
you can actually uninstall this equipment and bring it back to your base. Once you acquire all of it, you can embark upon the legendary Arco Centipede project. I'm not gonna get into this project here other than saying you can create an all-powerful beast and basically rule the planet if you complete it. But if you'd be interested in a video specifically looking at the Arco Centipede project, let me know down in the comments and I'll get right on it. So that covers the essentials of the Vanilla Genetics Expanded mod. It's already compatible with a number of other big animal mods such as Alpha Animals and VE Animals, so I look forward to seeing how those interactions pan out. If you've used this mod, let me know the most repugnant thing your pawns have created, uh, and maybe the most useful thing down in the comments. Honestly, the whole thing is just an affront to the RimWorld gods, uh, and I love it. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.